I've just found joy I'm as happy as a baby boy With another brand new choo-choo joy When I met my sweet Lorraine, Lorraine, Lorraine A pair of eyes that are brighter than the summer skies. When you see them, you realize why I love my sweet Lorraine. Hello, I'm Lauren Schoenberg, the senior scholar at the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. And I'm thrilled to be presenting yet another new series. It's called Who Was? And like all of our programming, it's aimed at expanding our love and passion for jazz and all of its incarnations and intersections to the whole world, frankly. However, this program is also aimed at two specific groups that we treasure. One, our elders. We do so many programs with our elders in Harlem, around Harlem, and frankly, in other areas too, we do it virtually. And one concern that they have is that the younger folks may not know who some of the giants of the earlier days of jazz were. They say, you know, will someone really know who Nat King Cole was? And we hope that these programs can help engender a dialogue between them and some of the younger folks, or just other folks, who need to know who was Nat Cole. Another group that is growing exponentially for us uh, are the young folks. And a lot of them do not know who Nat King Cole was. And we hope that, you know, we can have a conversation with some of the wonderful elders, some of the young folks within these groups, whomever wants to learn about who was Nat Cole. And to answer that question, we have engaged a brilliant young musician, a pianist named John Thomas. You may have heard him already. And he plays the piano. He's a band leader, a composer. And he has arranged, selected, uh, the musicians, uh, and the tunes for this Who Was Nat Cole program, and I think you'll agree he does a wonderful job. It does not try and imitate Nat Cole, makes it eminently contemporary and his own, and that's really the jazz way to do things, to find out your own musical personality. A brief synopsis of Nat Cole's career before we jump into the music. He was born in Montgomery, Alabama in 1919. He died much too young in 1965 in Los Angeles. The Coles family, his actual name was Nathaniel Adams Coles, uh, moved to Chicago, part of the Great Northern Migration, uh, in the early 1920s, and that's where Nat Cole uh, found his great inspiration from the brilliant pianist who was based in and around Chicago in those days, Earl Father Hines. In 1936, going into 1937, uh, there was a new production of the famous Black Broadway show, uh, shuffle Along, as written by U.B. Blake and Noble Sissel. They took it out to California. Nat Cole and one of his older brothers joined. And Nat Cole stayed out in California in the late 1930s, and that's where he formed his famous trio with guitar and bass. And what made this trio uh, so unique was, A, there were no drums, and B, uh, the guitar and the bass were not in the background, you know, kind of backing Nat from here. They were right up front. Uh, the piano, the guitar, and the bass intricately arranged by Nat Cole. And the trio sounded like none other. It became tremendously popular. Nat started singing, Straighten Up and Fly Right, Sweet Lorraine, all those wonderful records. And the trio became truly uh, internationally famous. As the years went by, Nat Cole became more and more of a singing star and left the piano further in the background. And uh, with few exceptions, uh, he did not record nearly as much on the piano. In fact, he almost gave it up altogether with a few exceptions. And when we come back after the music, uh, I'll mention some uh, recordings that you can look at or listen to even better uh, where you can really hear the brilliance of Nat Cole on piano. Anyway, we'll get to all that later. Let's go to the music right now as we present John Thomas and his band uh, reimagining the music of Nat Cole. Cole. Take it away, John.
That's a, uh, one of my favorite Nat King Cole, uh, well, standards that Nat King Cole is known for, uh, called Let There Be Love. Um, it's from a really cool special on BBC, I think it was 1963. Um, but Nat King Cole just completely sits down at the piano and the way he does it and just, you know, completely murders it nonchalantly and cool as ever. Um, I kind of want to play something else from that special. I really get to play Nat King Cole's book very often. Uh, so I'm grateful for the opportunity to kind of play through some of his music and we have some special guests coming up. Uh, but this is a song that I don't think I've ever heard live a day in my life. This, uh, this might be actually the first time I'm gonna perform it myself. Um, this is entitled That Summer, I'm sorry, That Sunday, That Summer. Yet again, from that same BBC special, that's, that's uh, at least the way I first heard it. Thank you. 
That Sunday, that summer. Whew, such a beautiful tune. Um, give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for this incredible band. So right now we have Bruce Harris on trumpet, Kyle Poole on drums. Woo! We can clap <laughs> everyone here. That really helps. <laughs> um, Barry Stevenson on bass. Andrew Latona on guitar. Yeah, yeah. So this is, we're, I'm really lucky to have all these guys. Um, I mean, just top tier musicians, top tier people, <laughs> top tier all around. Um, now I'd like to invite up a, a special guest to sing. Nat King Cole was known for singing a lot of standards um, and just making them his own. Like when he played a standard, sang a standard, uh, that was his song from that point on. And so many of uh, you know the tunes we play, you know, are associated with him. Um, so now I'd like to invite up Amani. Amani Roselli. <laughs> Did I add something? Did I add something? You okay, thank praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs> um, this is a this is a fantastic standard entitled "It Could Happen to You." Yeah, hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> Hide your heart from sight. Lock your dreams at night, it could happen to you Don't count stars or you might stumble Someone drops a sigh and down you'll tumble Keep an eye on spring, run when church bells ring It could happen to you All I did was wonder how your arms would be Thank you. 
night it could happen to you don't count stars or you might stumble someone drops a sigh and down you'll tumble keep an eye on spring run when church bells ring Your arms would be, and it happened, and then it happened, then it happened. Oh, it happened to me. All I did was wonder how your arms would be. Incredible, incredible. Now I'd like to play uh, some duo if I can, with the great Bruce Harris. This is the song, um, you know, I mean, Nat King Cole was probably one of the few people to ever even sing this song. I mean, I've heard maybe Dinah Washington sing it and a, a few others, uh, but it's another, another one of those rare treats. Um, it's incredible and, uh, and I would want to play with no one else besides Bruce. <laughs> Because it's just, it's a beautiful tune, and uh, well, you get, you guys will hear exactly what'll happen, but I, I, it's just magic. Uh, this is Blue Gardenia.
Yeah, Bruce Harris. Bruce freaking Harris. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Uh, we're going to finish off with one more uh, entitled Just You, Just Me.
Y'all enjoyed it. Wasn't that incredible? We just heard John Thomas and his band playing the music of Nat King Cole in his own way. It was, you know, pure Nat Cole and purest John Thomas. How's that? It was both things at one time. For those interested in digging more deeply into the history about Nat Cole, uh, I can recommend the wonderful biography written by Will Friedwald just last year, I believe. It's called Straighten Up and Fly Right, and it's a definitive telling of an incredible story, the Nat Cole story. If you want to really hear who Nat Cole was as a pianist, his brilliance and improvisations, you could do no better than to look to the sessions that he recorded, two trio sessions, not with his own trio, but with the great saxophonist Lester Young. And uh, they did one in 1942, they did one in 1945. One is kind of laid back, the other one is not laid back. They're both brilliant. And they're available in any number of ways, from the Mosaic label, uh, box sets, uh, to compilation records. Frankly, you can find them online, they're all over the place. Just look for Lester Young and Nat King Cole. Of course, there's the famous records with the trio, the vocal records, the big hits. You know, the, he, had, he had more big hits than almost anyone in the 1950s going into the 1960s. Uh, one album, I don't know if you still play LPs, if you have LPs, or whether you listen to them on CD, or whether you just download them or stream them, but one that is addictive in a great way. It's called After Midnight, and it's really the last great jazz record that Nat King Cole made. It was made in 1957, and he brought in some of his favorite musicians from the Duke Ellington Band, from the Count Basie Band, from the Jimmy Lunsford Band, and also a brilliant violinist, uh, who you'll become totally stuck on. His name is Stuff Smith. And After Midnight is just one of those records that once you start listening to it, it's almost impossible uh, to stop listening to it. Once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Congratulations and uh, our tip of the collective hat to John Thomas and what he did. On behalf of the board, the staff, our artistic directors at the museum, John Baptiste and Christian McBride, we thank you and we'll see you next time. I've just found joy I'm as happy as a baby boy With another brand new choo-choo joy When I met my sweet Lorraine, Lorraine, Lorraine A pair of eyes that are brighter than the summer skies When you see them you realize Why I love my sweet Lorraine